Good evening, uh, parents and staff and pupils who is uh, logging into this uh, online session tonight. Uh, I'm just going to move over to my um, presentation. There we go. Again, welcome and uh, please close your eyes for the prayer. Loving God, you have granted our children all the talents, abilities and spiritual gifts they need to follow your plan for their lives. Heavenly Father, please help them to use those gifts to serve you first and others second so that your will is done in their lives. Father, fill their lives with people who can lead them to you and your promises. Help them turn to you as they learn and grow so they can lead fruitful and prosperous, prosperous lives. Amen. There's uh, uh, Germany's uh, number. Um, at the end of the evening, I will uh, ask again to, um, or give you the opportunity again to ask questions. Um, those questions that you might ask through the presentation and I've touched on them, I'm not going to answer them at the end again. Uh, but uh, you're more than welcome to send through your, your questions, but hopefully all your questions uh, will be answered uh, in this uh, presentation. But there's a number I'd like to send uh, questions through. Unfortunately, there are too many participants that I can open the floor at the end that you can ask online. But uh, I know quite a lot of you have already sent me questions in the last 24 hours, and I uh, are covering those in my presentation. But any additional questions, you're more than welcome to uh, send that through to, to Germany. Just a, a reminder that we have, um, as a school, decided on eight stages how to reopen the school. And uh, we've marked stages one to two high alert, stages three and four elevated alert, stage five and six guarded alert, and stage seven and eight low alert. And we are now uh, moving to stage five and six. And just a reminder, stage five is where St. Patrick's CBC will open his doors for face-to-face -face learning for the grades approved by the Minister of Basic Education and is advised by SASA. And SASA again stands for Independent Schools Association of South Africa. Online learning and face-to-face -face classes will run concurrently at this phase. And all sports and cultural events or gatherings and other events that create crowded conditions will not take place at this phase. Assemblies will be conducted online. Aftercare will reopen for the relevant grades and physical education will start a program that supports spatial distancing. The physical education lesson for home-based pupils will still be published electronically. And then also uh, we'll move then to also stage six that also after we've um, brought uh, three grades back on Monday, we are gradually bringing the other grades uh, back as well. Um, and again, this will take place as, and when approved by the Minister of Basic Education, as vice by SASA, so we are doing it in accordance with their approval. Online learning and face-to-face -face classes will continue to run concurrently at this stage as well. And still, all sports, cultural events, and other events that create current conditions will not take place. So, these are the dates. So, already the senior management team started on the 25th of May, which was Monday. That was uh, the senior management team, as well as all the grade heads and deputies. Then on the 26th of May, uh, the admin cleaning and maintenance staff started. So that was Tuesday. All the teachers returned to campus today. And from the 1st of June, we're starting with a staggered start. Um, the good news is that this afternoon, uh, I received the news that we as independent schools can uh, start uh, re uh, reopen our ECDs. So Monday night, I said to the ECD parents, we are fighting hard behind the scenes uh, with Isasa to get our ECDs open. And uh, this afternoon, independent schools got the permission, I've got a black and white, that we as, um, as independent schools can open our ECDs. So that's, that's the good news, is that ECD, that's eight group one to two, two to three and three to four, can start on the 15th of June. I will call a specific ECD meeting uh, again uh, before that time. 16th of June, uh, which is youth day, we are going to continue with a normal school day on that day. Um, 
because the school is going to close on the 26th of June for two weeks. And I'll run through those dates now. On the 27th of June, the holiday will then start. And the 14th of July, uh, the school will then restart for pupils, which means that the staff and kids will have a two week holiday. The star dates as then are then as follows. On the 1st of June, grade 12, grade seven and grade R uh, will return to campus. So this coming Monday, grade 12, grade seven and grade R will start. On Wednesday, grade six and grade one will join them. And next week, Friday, the 5th of June, the grade fives and twos will join those grades. 8th of June, um, the grade 11s and 10s, the grade 3 and 4s, as well as PR can now also start on the 8th of June. So PR 4, turning 5 are also forming part of ECDs. Uh, so now that we have permission, we can now uh, bring the PRs back on the 8th of June. 9th of June will be the grade 9s and the 10th of June will be the, the grade 8s will then join us. And that means then that the all the, the grades uh, except ECD are then back uh, on, on campus. And then as I said, on the 15th of June, we will then bring in the ECD. I've spoken about uh, holiday and I just want to quickly run through our terms, how it would have worked before lockdown and how it's working after lockdown. And you'll note that um, if you look at 14 January to 9 April before lockdown, the term would have been 58 days now um, because of lockdown term uh, one was only 41 days so technically we've lost 17 days on during the, the holiday before lockdown would have been 10 april to 4 may so to incorporate all those uh, public holidays to alleviate that stop start uh, it would have been then 17 days and after lockdown or during lockdown our term then our holiday were then 18 march to 14 april that gives us 20 days um, that the holiday was but i need to remind you that um schools are talking about the reopening st patrick cbc never closed down the staff as the pupils left campus on the 17th of march after president Sarah Paul said that campuses must, schools must close on 17 march on the 15th of March, the staff stayed behind and they were trained for three days on online learning, all the platforms. Then they went home and then they started preparing the online lessons. That at the initial stage took teachers between eight and 10, less eight to 10 hours to prepare online lessons, uh, one lesson, because it was new. They had to figure out the platforms, they had to figure out how they're going to do it. Uh, now it still take them between three to five hours per lesson. But the St. Patrick's CBC staff did not um, take holiday because we needed to prepare and be prepared for the lessons when it started on the 15th of April. And that's why the majority of parents uh, in your surveys, you were very positive about the, the online surveys. And I gave those breakdown of that survey at the previous webinar where we could see how parents, as parents, you're very impressed with it. And that's why, because the staff worked so hard during those 20 days to make sure that um, our online lessons were ready. So term two then technically started on the 15th of April and we are closing on the 26th of June. This term is then 52 days. So we made up 14 days because before lockdown, it would have only been 38 days. Also, um, our holiday would have been from 27th of June to 20 July, which is 16 days. It will now be 27th of June to 13 July, which is only 11 days. So you can also see the holidays, four day less than what it would have been. The staff will again, that first week now, for the first time, really take a holiday this year. And that second week, they will start preparing the online lessons again to be prepared when the school starts on the 14th of July. Because as you know, we're running a dual system, online and face-to-face. -face. Term three will then run from 14 July to 18 September. You'll see we're keeping the dates, uh, then exactly the closing dates exactly the same, 18 September. The holiday, September holiday will be two weeks. And the term four, we're still working on that it will end the 2nd of December. Do note 
that the Minister of Basic Education might say schools only close 15th of December. But at this stage, we're keeping the term dates the same because we don't know when the matrix will write and we don't know when she wants us to close. So we are waiting because we all work around the matric exams because we all know or understand the matric exams might be later this year. So as soon as she's published those dates, then we can, uh, then I can give you a more formality or for more, a more formal answer on our dates going forward. You will note that uh, the school days before lockdown, we would have had 181 school days. We're now going to have 183 school days, which would, so it means in the, in the after lockdown period, we've gained two days, we've lost two holiday days. But if we're going to continue up to the 15th of December, of course, then we would have gained more days as well. We would have initially only taken a one week July holiday, but also you as parents are starting sending me a lot of emails to say my kids are tired, they need a break, and the staff as well. And that's why when I compared apples with apples, and that's why I'm showing you this tonight, you can see that I think, and I know my staff didn't take a holiday, it's now time that they take a break and that your kids also have a decent break. So also from grade four to seven, actually from grade uh, one to seven, we have, have heard that you feel the workload's a bit heavy. Uh, there is a new timetable being issued for grade four to seven tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Homan, who is the head of the primary school, has spoken to um, the staff and we are looking into it. You will notice that uh, the, the workload will be a bit uh, reduced and I hope that you will see it uh, when those lessons are coming out. So that's why we call it the relaxed workload. There is, we've listened to your concerns, we hear, heard that it's a bit too much and the teachers are working on it to see what they can do. But already I think with a new timetable that's being issued, you will notice that um, the workload will hopefully reduce a bit so it's not as heavy uh, on you. Then also um, the questions about assessments. Remember when the kids are, are back, the grade four to sevens, will write uh, an exam in September. So regardless if your kids are back or not at that stage, you'll have to come in to write that exam on campus and then go home. And the same for November, the final exams, those exams the kids will have, even if, they, uh, if we still run online lessons at that stage, they will have to come and write the final exam on school uh, uh, property and then go home. So again, I want to make it very clear that to catch up lessons, very difficult, to catch up assessments, that is a bit easier. Uh, so um, bear with us. Um, uh, during this, this, this time, uh, we might want to make sure that no child is losing out on curriculum time, but we will make up the assessments, uh, the exams, uh, we will make up in September and November. Support classes. Reminder that the teachers are available every day for those hours during the day, uh, during lesson hours, and all staff answer questions between eight and five during the day. So please um, don't wait for them to only return. Ask those questions on Edmodo. Some teachers create WhatsApp groups. You can ask teachers via email. Um, and a reminder that here you must follow the process of you ask the teacher. If there's no joy there, if you uh, uh, raise a query with a teacher, if there's no joy there, then of course you jump into the great head. And if there's no joy there, then you jump into Mr. Homan. But I know out of experience that addressing the teacher, 99% already it gets sorted there and vaguely it will come through to, to Mr. Homan or myself already, rather it will go through to him or to me. Then also um, with, so please uh, ask those questions now, don't wait until you're back. Especially those kids who are also gonna continue online lessons during this time, use the time to ask the staff questions, that's why they're there. Then also uh, reports, grade four to seven, uh, we will hopefully be able to uh, issue it by 3rd of June, or we all know now that grade one, two, and three uh, are a PR and ECD have all been issued, uh, and uh, grade four to seven will be issued uh, early next week. And then of course, the question about top 10 ranking, yes, top 10 ranking will still apply. Then uh, the question about daily program, uh, Please arrive by 20 past seven. The schools can only start at eight and you will, we'll go through the finishing times now or closing times, but please arrive by 20 past seven because it is a lengthy process you need to go through to be able to be cleared and to be on the other side where you can start the classes. So if you're gonna arrive at five, five to eight, you will be late for class. So please 
cooperate and please try to be on campus by 20 past seven, uh, half past seven later, so you can go through the process so by eight o'clock you're on, you're on pass. But just a reminder, grade PR and R, you close at 12, grade one at one o'clock, grade two at half past one, and grade three to seven, still closing at two o'clock. Break times, they will have two breaks during the day and they will follow a structured uh, program during break. For those kids that do not want to be part of the structured program, they will be able to, to sit out but then they, and, and with their friends, but then they will keep spatial distancing and staff will be out during break time as well to ensure that they adhere to this. But the sports staff will run a, a structured program during break as well, um, just to uh, engage the kids and to um, ensure that spatial distancing takes place. Uh, all pupils must be fetched by closing times, please. Uh, no child will be allowed to roam around or to wait on campus until parents arrive. They must either be in aftercare or they must be fetched, at, uh, so first of all, fetched at their closing time. If not, they must uh, uh, go to aftercare. And if they're not in aftercare and they are roaming around, we are going to put them in the holding class and we are going to charge you 300 rand per hour because I want to penalize you because you cannot leave your child on campus roaming around. Uh, it is about the pupil safety. It is about everybody's safety currently. Uh, before, even before lockdown, we said you're not allowed to do that. Um, so if you have issues fetching a child in the afternoon, they have to go to aftercare or otherwise they have to, uh, yeah, so they have to be fetched or they have to go to aftercare. Um, now it's unfortunately, we now live in times where the kids cannot roam around. Uh, we do not have enough staff in the afternoons to, to um, keep spatial distancing on property. That's not the security's job as well. Uh, so the staff will be in places where they can keep that. Uh, otherwise the kids must go home. So holding class, that is to penalize those parents who's not picking up their kids or is leaving them uh, or not enroll for aftercare and they allow them to roam around on the five o'clock in the afternoons. We're not allowed to do that. It's, it's, it, it's, it's, you create a liability risk for me as well. Besides your own child's safety that is um, at risk. Also, um, the tuck shop will run, but totally different. You will have to run a, uh, you'll have to pre-order. Info will be posted on the WhatsApp groups of how to order. And at the kids who, after you've ordered, they, the food will be dropped off in sanitized containers at their classes. The tuck shop will, doors will be locked. Nobody will be able to enter the tuck shop. Um, so we do it on a takeaway basis, but you have to pre-order and pay online um, and the food will be delivered to where your kids are based in those classes, as I just said, in um, sanitized containers. Also, uh, with toilet breaks, uh, the, the, when the kids are back on campus, the staff will clearly explain to them what's going to happen. Uh, also, we will monitor that there are not more uh, than the allocated cubicles of kids in the bathrooms. So that will be uh, monitored and the teachers uh, will in any case make sure that uh, spatial distancing are being kept during that period as well. Also, um, aftercare uh, with the meals, we, the kitchen will still prepare it, but there's a whole protocol the kitchen must uh, comply. For example, uh, the ladies will have to arrive in the morning and they'll have to shower on uh, on property, they will have to uh, change in, in new clothing um, and of course sanitize their hands. The kitchen is already sanitized, but that will also be sanitized on an hourly basis, etc. etc. So there's a full protocol that must be followed during that process as well. And then also parents and business visitors, you are they will have limited access to campus. Um, we will, for example, if you need to come to the campus. Uh, to go to the clothing shop or to pay, uh, those kind of things will be allowed. Uh, no more of my child forgot this, forgot that, I'm coming back to drop it off. That will not be accepted. Um, you will also notice, and we are going to do a video that you can, that still be will publish this weekend, that you can clearly see what will, expect it, what will be expected of you when you arrive on campus. Uh, but you also notice that your parents cannot go uh, behind the, beyond the um, sanitized tunnels. Um, unless you go to the admin building. But no parent will be allowed to go to classrooms anymore. Um, no parent 
uh, will be allowed to roam around on campus for no reason. Not that it was ever allowed before, but in any case, um, and even visitors will be limited as far as we can. So, uh, all just for deliveries um, and uh, parents that wants to come and meet with management, we'll try to do it as far as we can online. Otherwise, you'll have to go through the full, full process to be screened, but then only come to the admin buildings. You will not be allowed to go to any classroom or to roam around on campus or just sit and wait like you did before. Um, in the afternoons as well, you will see the full procedure of what's expected of you in the morning. I'll go run through now. And in the afternoons, we will also see there's a procedure as well. So the school has now uh, adopted infectious and communicable disease policy. And those are based on the Department of Health, World Health Organization, Department of Basic Education, as well as guidelines from ESASA. The there's a full sanitizing program now in place at school. Uh, the school was sanitized last week, Saturday. Uh, also, um, every uh, bathroom will get sanitized on an hourly basis. The primary school kids will not roam around. They will stay in a class. The teachers will roam around. Also, when the, so if every child will be allocated a desk, every break and in the afternoons, uh, those desks will be sanitized. Also, when kids enter a classroom and when they leave a classroom, they have to sanitize their hands. Also, um, in the morning when you arrive, no child can arrive without a mask. Uh, or, or anybody, parents, pupils, you must arrive with a mask. Once you, and you'll see the protocol that will take place in the mornings, uh, you will not be allowed to leave the vehicle until the staff member have been to your vehicle and they've asked you the eight, uh, they asked you eight questions. For example, um, do you have a headache? Do you have fever? Um, do you, do you have vomit? Uh, did you vomit? Do you, um, do you have any uh, sore throats, any symptoms of COVID-19 that they will check with you? Also, have you traveled uh, from a, a hotspot area? Do you have underlying conditions? What medicine are you taking? Those are the kind of questions that will be asked. And these are not because we want to ask it. That's according to regulations. After you've uh, completed your questions, while you're still in the vehicle, we will also take first, before you ask your questions, we'll first take your temperature as well. Even you as parents, even if you're not going to leave the vehicle, we'll still take your temperature as well because it doesn't help. We just take, check the kids' temperature, but they were with, were with you in the vehicle with uh, a high temperature. So they will check your temperature as well, regardless if you're going to leave the vehicle or not. And your temperatures will be recorded on this form that uh, we record. So if you have said yes to any of those above questions, we will then ask that you please go uh, to a doctor to be screened that you, and prove to us that you do not have COVID-19. Um, and also if you have a temperature, even if you said no to everything, but you have a temperature, you will not be allowed your kids will not be allowed to get out of the vehicle if it was one of them or you that have a temperature. Um, after um, you've now to check the temperature, you've answered your questions, you have now been cleared on all of that, you can then um, get out of the vehicle. Then you will notice there are, then you park your vehicle and then you can get out and then there are flags two meter apart on campus where you will go line up you will see that the great uh, R's to threes, they will enter the school where the hall is, that ramp. They will enter it from that side and grade four to sevens will enter it from between the tennis courts and admin buildings. So you're going to line up with your right area and then um, until the kids get to the, uh, to the tunnel, then you will, they will sanitize their hands and then they'll go through the tunnel and then you've completed the process. I'm getting quite a lot of questions about the sanitizing tunnel. How many times will they go through it in the mornings when they go through it? Uh, also, when they go for break on front field, they will go through it and in the afternoons when they go home. So it's not an in and out through the sanitizing tunnels uh, as well. And I'll show you in our video of how it works. Uh, also, um, as I said, we are going to do a video with the procedure just to explain to you exactly what will happen on the mornings when you arrive. Also, questions about if I have an illness besides COVID-19. So, especially in these times where you have flu or cold, 
um, then you have to stay at home. And that's why we can continue running the online lessons. Um, also, if you have any of those symptoms, you'll have to go uh, for clearance and prove to us that you don't have, that it's not COVID-19. Um, so if you stand, for example, in the queue this morning and you have a temperature, or you said yes to one of those questions, then you'll have to go to a doctor to be cleared that you don't have COVID-19. But our appeal to all parents are that, uh, especially this winter and during this time, that if you, are, if you have a cold or flu, rather uh, stay at home. That's why we're running the online lessons as well, so no kids will lose out on academic time. Uh, <clears throat> but we all know that um, we all are now really look out for everybody's safety. What if we have a positive COVID-19 case at school? Uh, then we'll have to track who had contact with that person. They will have to go for tests. Uh, we will have to, um, and staff and everybody contact, they will go for tests and we will have to close down that section of the school so that we can sanitize, making sure that everybody that had contact are clear and, uh, as I said, I'll go through the full cleaning process, closing, uh, cleaning process rather, and then we can reopen. And what will happen to anybody that refused to cooperate? Unfortunately, your school contract will be cancelled. If it's a staff member, they can lose their job because of it. Um, but as I said now, at all these platforms, uh, we're going to have a zero tolerance to this because at the end of the day, um, you expect me to keep um, everybody safe. Also, if we found out that somebody lied in the questionnaire, then also uh, we will not just cancel your contract, we might even take legal steps as well. And also, if you refuse to cooperate on campus, it might even lead, lead to legal steps as well. And those, of course, the things that I have to mention, those are the terms, conditions, but I don't even want to talk about that anymore because I know that you all realize we have the best interest of everybody at heart. And I know you as parents also have the CBC family uh, interest at heart. Then also um, questions, uh, we got the following questions. People's family, Kimberly from outside Northern Cape borders, uh, I can give you a permit to come through. Remember, if you're coming from outside the borders you do not that's northern cape borders not international borders if you come from outside northern cape borders from free state or western cape um you will have to declare it to us and also if it's coming from hotspot areas you have to ensure that you're not showing any of those symptoms and that you are cleared and again i appeal to you as parents uh to be honest and to keep everybody's interest at heart you know now that we're opening Please fetch your kids from uh, other areas as soon as possible and let them uh, stay at home for that three or four days just to make sure they're not showing any symptoms. And if they are, please make sure that you test them and be honest with us because we also found out that people know, <laughs> it's amazing how people not tittle tell on each other and then I need to follow up um, and I've not explained what the consequences are. So please just be honest with us and be honest with yourself I know we all want to go to back to work. I know we all want our kids back at school, but we also constantly need to think of the rest of the school community as well. Grandparents with underlying health conditions, that's why we are running online lessons for those of you that might feel, because we know that kids might be asymptomatic. If you feel that it might be a risk that they might catch not just um, COVID-19, but they might catch a cold or flu and it might put your, the grandparents at risk because they're living with them or um, they also live at the house where they live. Um, then that's, that, I can't make that decision for you. That's why we're running online lessons and face-to-face -face lessons concurrently so that no child gets disadvantage for the period where we, we, which we live in. But that is a decision you as parents must make. I cannot make the decision, but all I can do is to assist. And all, the only way I can assist is by running those systems uh, online. If I look, could look in a crystal ball and for a fact tell you nobody's gonna get sick, then it's a different story, but none of us can do that. Pupils of underlying health conditions as well. Um, we do know that kids are less at, less at risk for this virus. We also know that even if they're in underlying health conditions, um, that are, they might be then at higher risk. Again, this is a decision that you as parents must make. I cannot make that decision on your behalf. All I can say again here, I'm running face-to-face -face, uh, and online lessons. 
and you as parents must decide what's the best. Even if your kids got asthma, uh, we also know in the colder conditions, they just do close, uh, tend to close. Even as cloudy, it tends to close a little bit easier on those days. Parents, that is a decision that you must make. But I can only assist with online lessons and face-to-face. -face. And again, reiterate here, that's why we're doing it, so that nobody leaves out on the curriculum time. Also, um, I've not spoken about normal flu or cold. Rather stay at home. Um, also, check your symptoms to make sure. And also, get a second opinion if you suspect that you might have uh, COVID-19. No guardian at home. That's why we are coming back to school, running face-to-face -face, uh, classes, so that um, for those who do not have somebody to look after the kids, that you can come to school. Again, I don't have the, the answer here for parents that, um, that don't have a guardian at home to look after the kids, but they also don't want them to come to school. Um, I, again, I, I, the only solution I can give you, that's why I run both of those systems, and you as parents must decide what's the best for you. CBC blankets will not be allowed. No blanket this winter will be allowed. Uh, I am going to allude to the fact that kids are wearing civvies, and, um, and because of that, they can also then dress warmer than normal school uni uni winter uniform. But CBC blankets will not, no blankets. Uh, but those who bought CBC blankets, well, we will not allow them this year just to keep um, all, uh, to keep the place, the school as hygienic as possible. So why sanitizing tunnels? It's a precautionary measure. We do know that this is a surface pack. And for anybody that might have a, not just COVID-19, but any other virus bug on them, uh, and we do know that this is a surface pack, nobody can really tell us how long it is alive. That's why we do the tunnels as well. It's a precautionary measure. A lot of independent schools have gone this route as well. And again, we are spraying. Um, uh, uh, it's basically like pool water. We alternate between this and F10, which is also um, human friendly. And you can, um, you can, I've had this in my mouth. I've uh, um, numerous times I've gone through this thing, but I uh, don't think I've got funny twitches. I don't think I'm green yet. Um, but it's safe. You have, as I said, I put it in my mouth as well. It's uh, last week Thursday on purpose to see if I uh, feel dizzy afterwards or I feel awful or whatever, and I have no side effects. This is um, uh, and also uh, if you have uh, asthma or anything like that, it's got no uh, side effects. It's also can go in your eyes. Um, it doesn't burn or anything. So it's safe for me. I had quite a few little ones already going through that we can just test if it's working and the kids are going through and without any issues. Um, but it's uh, they just to have that additional step because we do have everybody's interest at heart, best interest at heart. If you haven't seen this clip in the video, oh, on Facebook rather, I'll just give you a page for you. There you can see we have now put plastic on both sides um, so that uh, if there's a bit of breeze, that uh, spray can't, break, uh, can't uh, uh, be blown away it now stays within that uh, cubicle. As also, because the floor gets wet, uh, it also cleans your soles, uh, your, shoe, your uh, shoe soles when you walk through as well. For those of you who just want to have one more look, I'll play you the clip once more. It is also on Facebook if you want to go and have a look. So as I now mentioned earlier, we will not, uh, I've never thought of say this in my life, that you're not allowed to wear school uniform. You must please wear civvies. Why? Because the school blazer, the jersey, the tracksuit, if you're going to wash that every day, it is going to, it can't, won't last. And we also know we're not going to do it daily. So with civvies, it's also very difficult for us to control who um, have changed their uh, uniform or not. So we want you to wear civvies so that um, we can control that you are wearing a fresh pair of clothes on a daily basis. Um, the same with a mask, and I'll get to masks now as well, but we will check that you are wearing a clean mask every day. Hair must be tied. I've got a question about girls' hair, and uh, one or two might not have beads in their hair. Because it's a vis and the hairdressers are closed, it's fine, they can stay in. But hair must still be neat, 
and it must be clean and it must be tight, please. Also, um, fabric face masks are compulsory for all persons on campus. And as I said in the previous webinar, we will supply each pupil with one free mask. And the other masks are available at the stationery shop, at the um, clothing shop, at 30 Rand per mask. Just a reminder that it's triple layered. The question, can you bring your own mask? We've been warned that uh, quite a lot of masks that have been made at home do not fit the requirements. For example, if you take a mask and you put a flame in front of it and from a distance and you blow, that flame is not supposed to move. When the flame moves, it means that your um, that it's not thick enough, it's uh, etc. But it must still be breathable as well. And we also know that some people are using the wrong material, so you can actually suffocate from it. So we know that our masks are the right material. It's the right make. It's fitting the requirements. So therefore, we're asking you to wear the St. Patrick's CBC mask. I'm buying it for thirty rand, and I'm selling it for thirty rand. We are not making money or profit on this mask. Um, also, the mask that we have, we kept it white on the inside for two reasons. Number one, you can then write your name with a black uh, koki on the inside and you'll mark it number one and number two. So in the mornings so on Monday, you'll wear mask number one and on the Tuesday, you'll wear mask number two. Um, the, it's white on the inside and etc. It's white on the inside so that we can uh, see if those masks are being washed or not. Mr. Homan is going to do a demonstration on how to wear the mask, how to look after the mask. All the do's and don'ts will be recorded tomorrow, and that video will also be sent over this weekend. So over this weekend, you will receive two videos. One, how to wear the mask, how to take it off, how to put it on, and also um, he will have, and then also how to look after your mask. Uh, and so that's the one video. And as I said, the other video is how to, um, what must I do in the mornings when I get to campus? And what must I do when I come and fetch my kids in the afternoon? Also, you will be allowed to wear a visor. From tomorrow, they are also for sale in the clothing shop. Again, what I buy it for, I'm selling it for. Um, and uh, they are, also, on top of your mask, you can wear your visor. There are quite contradicting information on this. Even if you look at certain documentation for government, it says a cloth mask or anything similar. For the little ones to wear the cloth mask the whole day, we know they're going to pull on it, they're going to struggle. And that's why up to PR, we are supplying the kids with a visor. It is advisable that you do buy this visor so that the kids can have a breather from that mask during the day. So parents from grade one up, I would advise that you buy the visor. Some parents are a bit nervous of the visor. That's why I said it's, it's, uh, you don't have to, but you may if you want to. And that is uh, 30 Rand per visor um, that, is, that you can buy at the clothing shop. And also, those visors must also please be marked. Any unmarked visor or any unmarked uh, mask that we pick up will be disposed of. Not in the normal dustbins. They will be, we have now specific, especially for our cleaning staff, there are specific bins where they, uh, in a closed environment where no kids can get to, because they're being issued with, um, they also have these, the, the, the face cloth masks to arrive in the morning and to leave in the afternoons. But during the day, they have disposable masks and disposable gloves. And they sign for it in the morning. And they, when they put it back in the bin, under supervision, they sign it again that it's gone in that bin. Uh, so we have specific areas where we dispose of this. And this will also be disposed uh, in those bins. So please don't come and fight with me to say, but you lost your mask. Um, also, if I pick that mask up on a separate area, uh, we will not return it to the child because then it's been contaminated. I can't just give it back to that child. Um, so then it will also be disposed of. But we will in any case pick up quickly if they don't have the mask during the day. But for example, if they get in the car and they drop it or whatever, then it will be disposed of. And of course, we will apply our 1.5 meter social distancing uh, as well. Um, 
or our DBE documents. I'll make it very clear. It's 1.5 meters. The desks will be 1.5 meters and we will encourage the kids. Although in the road, when you stand, we'll keep our two meter distances, but in the classrooms, we'll keep our 1.5 meter uh, spatial distance, social distancing. And you as parents will be encouraged to set the example, just like we as staff must set the example. And it's difficult because we are social creatures and we do like to stand and chat, um, but we just need to make that we can chat behind a mask and we keep our distance. Physical education and school of the art lessons will support spatial distancing. For those who do uh, travel abroad to high risk areas and come back across the borders, will have to be quarantined. Um, that's a non-negotiable. But I want to also ask you as parents to be responsible. If you've traveled to a hotspot area like Western Cape, Gauteng, KwaZulu-Natal, Eastern Cape, and you travel back to, to back to the province, do the right thing and keep your child at home. Just make sure that you do not show any of the symptoms. They're not losing out the academic time because you're doing the online system, online lessons. But I do appeal to you to not just think about yourself, but think about the school community. And even if you think you're going to hide it from us, we will find out that you've been traveling to those hotspot areas. And if you're not going to declare it, and you're not going to keep your kids at home just to make sure you haven't picked up anything in that provinces, we unfortunately will have to make contact and say you cannot, uh, you'll have to go for, for official screening to make sure that you are, are clean. That's unfortunately what will need to happen during this time. This quarantine and this whole process will, of course, stay in effect until St. Patrick's CBC declares a stage eight. And we will only declare our stage eight when the government and President Ramaphosa declares that this is now uh, a stage one in South Africa. Our stage eight will coincide with South Africa's stage one or phase one. Also good news this afternoon is that I'm allowed to open the boarding house as well. The boarding house will only open on the 13th of July. I will hold a specific boarding house meeting in the next two weeks. We do know that because you're going to cross the international border, you will have to be quarantined in a state uh, facility. So we need to clarify where those are. That's, of course, we will be screened and make sure that you, are, that you do not have this virus before you can come back to the boarding house. So I'm going to make it very clear to all parents that anybody who's traveled internationally and come across, they will be quarantined. They will be quarantined in accordance with what the requirements are from government. We, in any case, not allowed to quarantine anybody ourselves. Um, and these are for international travels. But boarding house parents, there's good news but there are a full pro a long process that needs that we need to go through and i will call a boarding house meeting as soon as i have all those answers but at least we are allowed to start it but also i'm only allowed to bring 50 percent back in the boarding house and therefore it will only be the senior grades the junior grades will still have to be um on a school at home with online lessons um but i'll call a full online meeting with you soon as soon as we've gone through all the requirements for the, the tuck pr and r parents will know now what i'm talking about for those parents that paid for tuck but you lost out you you will be made up don't worry you haven't paid for something that you'll not receive mr homan and his team are very uh, and uh, mrs gill who's the great head of this uh, pr and r are fully aware of it and they'll make sure that no child that paid for tuck will be will be losing out on that then also, because of um, COVID-19 and spatial distancing, chess uh, will not be allowed. As you know, we do have a chess club, but besides that, the kids do play chess in class because that's part of foundation phase to uh, help with their analytical thinking. Chess will not uh, be able, they will not, chess will not take place now because of spatial distancing. Also for our parents that uh, wants to continue with online learning, but data is an issue, we are going to do a data drive-through from the 1st of June. So during certain hours, and we'll communicate that to you this weekend, you'll be able to stop in Henderson Road on the boarding house site 
and on in front where the maintenance gates are and you will then lock into our uh, wi-fi and you'll be able to for a half an hour max then you'll be kicked off we will be able to download our um, your edmodo lessons and then the kids have it at home um, for those kids that do come to school and they and also in the primary school mr homan will give you some requirements but you will have you will be allowed to bring your devices mr homan will communicate that or i'll communicate with mr homan tomorrow uh, just to give some clarity on that, you also have access to our Wi-Fi. But don't go, yeah, I can bring my phone. There will be clear requirements and to Mr. Homan for certain grades, also not for the whole primary school, etc. So Mr. Homan will make, uh, we will uh, communicate that. Pupils back on campus uh, in June. The question there, how many will be back? We will just be under 400 back in June. Remember, we are 1,100 pupils on, uh, registered. Uh, and uh, in June, there will be 400. So that equates to 47%. And then in July, it jumps to 60%. And then in August, it will go up to 70%. Uh, and in September, it jumps to uh, 85%. And then some parents said they will decide when they want to bring the kids back. Um, they just want to see what's happening with this virus in South Africa and in Kimberley and et cetera. For those who haven't filled in your survey, please complete that survey. Um, because you will not be allowed to be, if you haven't completed that survey, you will not be allowed on campus. Also, um, if you haven't filled that survey and you arrive, let's say, example, you have a great art child and you haven't completed the survey, or you said in your survey you only bring come back in July and you arrive on Monday, you will not be able to join those classes because we're working on the numbers that we have and we're making sure that we are adhering to spatial distancing regarding the numbers that we have. If you are listening to, to tonight, you think, but maybe I should bring my child back in June. You must give us 48 hours notice. So if you still tell me tomorrow morning, I would like to have my child here on Monday, that will be accepted. Two o'clock tomorrow afternoon, anything after that, you let me know, but I want to have my child to start on Monday, I'll say to you, sorry. Only on Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday now, we'll communicate because now you need to give us an opportunity to reshuffle those classes to make sure that we, or the, in, in the planning inside that classroom, that we are adhering to the numbers that we have. So the teachers are, will know, because the teachers want to know the numbers and they want to know who's coming back. So if every child coming back on Monday or Wednesday or Friday, they feel uh, welcome. So, uh, or next, the following week as well. So please, um, if you arrive in the morning, your name is not on the list, you will not be able to get out of that vehicle. You have to give us 48 hour notice if you change your mind or if the survey is not in. And then with school fees, if you have no fee arrangement on file or you have a broken fee arrangement, you are not allowed to be allowed to return and you are prob most probably already blocked on it murder as well. This is again just to be fair to those parents who are paying, always made arrangements and sticking to those arrangements. So please, um, if you have fallen behind your school fees uh, and you have not made contact with the finance department, you have a broken fee arrangement or no fee arrangement, please make contact with um, the finance department. Uh, otherwise, again, you will not be allowed to return to school. And here I also need to thank every parent that uh, um, has made contact with us during this difficult time to say my business has been severely affected and they made a fee arrangement. All, and also all those parents that uh, were thankfully not affected by this and could pay uh, as per normal. A huge thank you to you as well. I really appreciate your cooperation. But every parent that made contact us to say they're in a sticky situation, we've made a plan and they put a fee, a, a, a fee, a fee arrangement in, plan, in place and we're walking a path with them as well. Um, because we know that some of our families were severely affected by this and they made arrangements with us, uh, no discounts, no discounts. They made arrangements with us uh, to pay off the rear amount. And uh, so a huge thank you to all of you and also to all parents uh, that's, that's keeping paying you. You're making life easier for, for us because our, as I explained in detail in the previous webinar, uh, we still have our um, fixed overheads that need to be paid. Then the question about re-registration for next year, remember, if you are on our books this year, 
regardless if you are face to face or online learning and your school fees are count are, are, are up to date or you are as an asset keeper have an arrangement you're keeping to the arrangement then of course you'll get a re-registration form in september like we normally do and you indicate to us that you're coming back uh, next year um, so regardless of being homeschooled or um, at campus you'll get your re-registration form as long as you're adhering to our COVID 19 regulations you're adhering to school fees and payment of that then you'll get your re-registration form and you're welcome to join us next year again because you're part of the family and then also a um, reminder that the school is now cash free so if you normally pay cash in at the office we will not accept that cash anymore it must go to the bank uh, so please go and pay it into our school and our um, school account at the bank uh, the standard bank account is still open uh, but we do prefer that you rather we are moving over to fmb uh, also um, we have sent out a snap scan as well as you can snap scan a lot of parents already are paying their accounts via snap scan as well uh, so that uh, also well done to all of you we really learn how to do this online thing but the cash free environment is there because of the safety of the kids this g4s truck that came to fetch cash on a daily basis every time a truck arrived on a campus i chose find my back down my back so um and we've now taken this opportunity as well to go totally cash free so you can still come and pay with your cart on campus although we want to limit that as well but you that's why we have that snap can snap scan option we can still pay by a card uh, but if you really don't have any other way and you want to come and pay on campus your cart you you may but we will not accept cash uh, anymore because for everybody's safety on campus. I'm not going to move over to the Q&A and I believe there are a couple of questions. You all know about the story about gloves where they say gloves can also are contaminated, not contaminated. Um, disposable gloves, um, to be honest, I don't know what to give you that we've obviously sussed as well about gloves and they also, and it seems like everybody's been in a gray area about gloves. Wool gloves, I prefer not. Disposable gloves, I know some parents are a bit wary, they want their kids to wear gloves, but you need to understand with the hand sanitizer as well, they must just continue to sanitize it because otherwise, even with a glove, they touch your eyes, whatever, they, it, it can, you know, it's not clean. Um, I can't forbid you to wear gloves because it is cold as well. Um, so disposal gloves, yes. Um, but again, disposal gloves do get become warm and sweaty. Are the kids gonna wear it the whole day? Um, it's, it's a difficult one, uh, but we also got guidance from Isasa to say you can't really say no, but there's also quite a few different me medical opinions about gloves as well. So. Um, I would say, yes, they may wear uh, disposable gloves if they want to, um, but uh, also they will have to go through that sanitizing process as well, just like if I was with bare hands as well. Um, that, will, that will be the, the condition. The question we received today as well, that somebody wants to come and view the classrooms before they come back. If you, it will be after hours, so it will not be during the, the day, you are welcome to make an appointment with that uh, section um, and, uh, and then come to, to view it. Um, but there will be specific times and I would prefer that it happens when there are no, um, no kids or really staff are around on campus, but it can be uh, arranged. Uh, and I think maybe the easiest one is uh, contact Mr. Homan directly um and uh, ask him for for that to be able to do that the government schools are only opening on the 8th of uh jan of, of june uh that does not affect us um as long as i have all my protocols in place and we do know that um department of basic education and health will probably also come and audit us at some stage uh, which I will welcome because um, they can also then tell me where our shortcomings. Uh, we have followed the policies. We got another updated policy from Isasa today. I've worked through it. I do think we are ticking the boxes, but I do value 
anybody that from health or DBE to come and visit us, to do an audit and say to me, Jacques, maybe you can improve there as well. It's just to our benefit. So, um, but we, do, we are independent. We could have not started before the 1st of June. We had to wait for the minister to make that call. She did say 1st of June. So, and also because we're independent, we can bring more grades back as we are doing, but we're still staggering it to make sure that we iron out the issues that we might have incurred when that kids arrived before we bring the, the funding grades as well. And I'll do that as well. If I realize that, for example, if I bring the grade 12, sevens and art back on Monday, we run through the process on Tuesday again, and I still realize there's still one or two things we must do, then I will delay, then I'll communicate and say, I'm not gonna bring those other grades back on the Wednesday or I'll bring them back on the Thursday. I'll run the, run the system once more to make sure that we are uh, um, okay. So that's why also it was so good to have the big starters morning with the teaching staff where we could iron out one or two glitches that we had. Um, and again, also that's why we're staggering the, 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 the kits and we stagger at tunnels so that if we do experience an issue, we can immediately resolve it and we have another day to resolve it as well. Waiting class will still be operational again with um, spatial distancing. And what, what I, one thing I neglected to say at aftercare, the aftercare will be spatial, key spatial, spatial distancing. So some of them might be now in the aftercare house, some of them might be in certain classrooms uh, at school. Still getting their lunch, as I said, there's a full with less, less requirements that we need to fulfill to make sure that we are keep, that we are safe and that the food is safe. But we will split those classrooms. Um, so if there were normally 20 in an aftercare class, we will split them so that they keep their special distancing. So we might do 10, 10 in a class, or if you realize that uh, 10 stalls too many in a class, we'll reduce it to eight and we'll split them over three classrooms, et cetera. So we are, we, we will keep our special distancing there. For those who's across the border, if for example, in September and, uh, you are across the border, and I said you will write your, uh, uh, even if you're homeschool, you write your exam on property. If you're across the border, we do already have spoken to our contacts in Lesotho and in Botswana that we will then uh, either courier or print, so you send those papers, they will print it out for us, and you'll be writing there in a specific venue in Masuru and in, and in Gaborone. Uh, if they are, I know that quite a few of our borders are also from uh, Mafi King or my king rather, uh, we will also then work around it. So uh, maybe right at that international school that's based at, uh, at my king. So we have already thought about it. And when you get to close that time, we've already spoken to role players. They were able to assist you. Public transport will be the parents' responsibility to ensure that they are using a vehicle or transport that's been approved to operate during this time. The, when they arrive on campus, the public transport will have a designated area on campus where they will stop. We will have a designated trained person that will work with those transport vehicles and no uh, pupil will be that use public transport or will use uh, transport uh, will be able to, or public transport rather, will be able to use Henderson Road anymore. They have to use the toy span coming into Cornwall Road, our service road. There will be a designated area for them. Every child, regardless if they're from our school or not, temperature will be taken, including the driver. The driver will have to prove to me that he's got a license to operate during this time. And we also know that these vehicles need to be sanitized on a daily basis. And you will have to give me proof that those vehicles have been sanitized as well. So there's a full skin of cleaning process that will take place for those vehicles. If any of those pupils, regardless of they of my school or not, are testing above 38 degrees, the little one will be removed from our, so it's our, our uh, CBC pupils within this vehicle. A uh, child from another school test positive or tests above 38 degrees. We will remove this CBC pupil from the transport. We will keep them with Nurse Moller in a quarantined, uh, quarantined uh, room and inform your parents to come and fetch your little one because they were in a vehicle where somebody had, even the driver had 38 degree, above 38 degrees. We will not send your child back with that transport to your house because you might be at work and now we're putting your little one at risk. 
but they will be quarantined on campus until, and we will phone you immediately, and you must please come and fetch them immediately and go through the screening process and waiting period to make sure that they do not uh, contract anything before they're allowed back on campus. Online learning and school timetable will be the same. Also, a reminder that uh, anybody that travels from the Eastern Cape, Free State, or whatever, regardless of their staff member or parent, they have to go through the screening process. So, in the mornings, so like what they do is they fill in the um, questionnaire that they do not have any of the symptoms. Uh, and we'll continue to monitor that none of them, if you develop those, those symptoms, and of course, you must be staying at home um, and also going for tests. But none of my staff. Um, that's back have, have indicated any symptoms or are showing any symptoms. Uh, all staff that enter, for example, I have one staff member that have laryngitis, she's at home, she's not at school. Uh, also, my staff that have uh, high risk, that's high risk themselves, for example, pregnancies and those kind of things, they're also at home. We are not taking risk for anybody's health, um, but also. Uh, this morning, again, all staff were screened for temperatures. They had to fill in those questions and we will continue monitoring them. But the staff also know and they are responsible enough to tell me that if they, they think they have a, a symptom to go through the screening. But up till now, uh, also those staff that have traveled from across the, the borders, so the provincial borders, um, we've asked them to screen. Uh, do they show any symptoms? We have asked them the harder questions and up till now, they're all clear. If your child only re returns uh, in September uh, and they're part of aftercare, then I would suggest um, you make contact with Mrs. Mistor uh, tomorrow, who's the financial manager, and uh, speak to her regarding uh, billing of aftercare. Um, I don't know your, your account or situation, so it's easier to say anybody that is we're part of aftercare are being bought for aftercare, but you're only going to come back in September, October, uh, rather make contact with Mrs. Mistor. Uh, email address is cmistor uh, at uh, St. Patrick's or Sierra Zim. Matt Mistor is spelled M-I-S-D-O-R-P at St. Patrick's or Sierra Zim. So it's cmistor at St. Patrick's or Sierra Zim. Uh, just send her an email and uh, she will assist you. If you. I'm also going to give you my email if you that, email, that uh, surname is too complicated. You will have my email address. You're more than welcome to email it to me and I'll just forward it to her and she'll make contact with you. Any curriculum changes due to online platforms? At this stage, uh, no. Um, the primary school is actually uh, ahead of the curriculum in, in the majority of the subjects. So um, we are... Uh, doing well with our curriculum. And that's why I also said we are continuing curriculum and we'll catch up on assessments when we are back. Yes, if you travel to Johannesburg uh, for a specialist, uh, I would prefer that you come back, you wait for, because we know the symptoms will show within three or four days, uh, that you rather than stay at home uh, making sure that uh, you do not show any symptoms, that you are clear before you come to school. Uh, we can definitely do pictures of kids in the classrooms like we would normally do on Facebook. Uh, we can definitely uh, do that as well. And I know in any case that Jo Marie will make sure she gets to every class taking photos um, just to show to parents that they are okay. Banking details, Germany will put it on the, on the group now, on all the WhatsApp groups. If, you, if you're not in the WhatsApp groups, uh, you have a number, if you, uh, and uh, please then just uh, send it, that she can also load you on the WhatsApp group. If you missed that number, it's 082-446-0890. I'll repeat myself, 082 082-446-0890. Send her WhatsApp, she'll immediately send you a link or a SMS even. She'll send you an SMS. Uh, what's, <laughs> let me try again. You can either WhatsApp or SMS her. She will send you the um, WhatsApp link via WhatsApp 
so that you can join the WhatsApp groups. Um, and also, if you don't get miss that number again, you can email me. If you have indicated on the um, survey that you're starting with us, but you want to change your mind as well, uh, you're more than welcome to do that as well. So if you feel, um, because there's, there, there might be somebody close to you that uh, you might have been at risk with COVID-19, as far as I understand this question, right? Then you can withdraw uh, and then rather do online learning. And thank you for, for that, that you're responsible to do that. I really appreciate it. Every grade will have a designated area, so a tunnel. So grade four to sevens will use the tunnel between the tennis courts and the admin building. Grade R, one, two, and three will use the tennis court, uh, will use the tunnels at the um, netball courts, at the hall. That's the old uh, netball court, that's cement uh, or concrete slab there. So that is uh, uh, the grade R to threes will go through there. And then the high school will have their own designated tunnel here at the backfield. And then ECD will have two tunnels, one from uh, opposite our house here at the boarding house gate. And also when you get to the boarding house chapel, between the boarding house chapel and the ECD building, there will be a tunnel there. Yes, if you, the question is that your essential workers, it sounds like it's a long process. Uh, the staff will be out to receive your kids. So if you, um, you'll see there's a process you go through in the mornings, uh, you all will be, um, just you'll have to answer those questions and you all, your temperature will be taken. But at that point, the kids can get out of the vehicle once they got the clearance. So in any case, get a sticker to say it's been cleared and then you're more than welcome to uh, be on your way. Okay, let's go. So you see now all the WhatsApp questions are in there to the chat room. Are you able to give an example of social distance friendly activities during COVID? Okay, so some of the examples are now Mr. Adams will do this better than me, but in any case, um, kids like to kick a ball. So they can stand in a circle, they keep their uh, 1.5 or 2 meters distance from each other and in the circle the 2 meters and they kick the ball to each other. They also will, um, with the hockey sticks, which school have hockey sticks to kick and use as well. Again, Somebody can stand two meters from me, I stand here and I pass the ball to him. That's not two stupid examples. I know Mr. Adam has got much more exciting uh, plans than that, but that's just to give an idea of what they will do uh, for those kind of activities. The children who will be doing online lessons, will they still receive the same work as they're doing face to face? That's you, not, no. Sorry, please break down the advantages and disadvantages of home versus face to face. Advantages versus disadvantages uh, for online learning uh, or face-to-face. -face. I just want to remind you that face-to-face -face and online learning, we're going to make sure that, that uh, we at, at online learning will not be disadvantaged. You'll get the same lessons. Um, that also, advantages and disadvantages for face-to-face -face and online learning, that's for you as parents to decide. Um, we will make sure that child, that kids on campus or at home don't lose out. Some parents are essential workers, both mom and dad. That's why kids have to come back. Uh, some parents, um, mom or dad might have lose, lost their work during this period. So there is somebody now at home um, and they decided to rather keep the kids home as well because it's winter. Um, but at the end of the day, the advantages and disadvantages, the majority of parents that keeps the kids at home currently is because they have the opportunity to do it. And they rather say, no, but I'd rather wait winter out before I send my kids. The advantage of kids being back on campus is they have, uh, the, the, the online learning kids will have the opportunity to ask the teacher still questions like they do before, like they've done before, need mode or whatever. But now with the online, with the face-to-face, -face, the teachers will be available. They can ask the questions there. Also, they will be able to interact with their friends. Yes, with distance, but their friends will be there and they can have contact with them. Also, they don't have to talk to you anymore the whole time or the siblings that have now at least uh, other company as well. Um, but in the day, uh, again, uh, my disadvantages and advantages and your advantages, advantages uh, I, can, I can list you a hundred. Some of my advantages to me will be disadvantages for you. 
Um, all we are trying to do is to say to every parent, you must make the right decision for your family, what you are comfortable with. My job is to ensure that I create a safe environment as far as I can. And that's why I've also introduced these sanitizing tunnels as well. Nowhere does the regulation say I have to do it, but I've done it. We're really trying to think out of the box to keep everybody safe. Um, but at the end of the day, you as parents must decide. But the biggest advantage is for kids in the class, the teachers are there, they can ask questions to the teacher straight and they can, they have interaction with their friends. Um, those are the biggest advantages. And then of course, they can start be doing some physical education and physical activity with the kids during break as well with the friends keeping their space. Um, that's in a nutshell. Okay, so we still pack the kids at lunch. You still pack your kids a lunchbox. No sharing will be take place. No sharing can take place. Uh, your lunchbox will be yours, so they can't swap out. Uh, I know some of them do swap out. Uh, that will not be able to happen anymore. Teachers are going to be very strict. I do believe that some of them might even now, some teachers or Mr. Herman said to me this afternoon, if I understand it correctly, they're thinking that the kids are rather eating class where they can control it and then they will go and play outside for social distancing. Um, so with those, putting those kind of thing. And then also we will show them how to remove the mask so they can have lunch and then put the mask back as well. Um, because we know we have those kind of questions that's also coming through. And that's why Mr. Herman will do that video. Okay. Uh, what happens if a learner or educator tests positive? Just a reminder, if anybody tests positive, then we need to trace who were in contact with that uh, staff member or those, and those kids or that child that tests positive. And then uh, that section of the school will have to close down. Uh, everybody that were in contact with that uh, person will then have to be tested. Uh, and once we know through the window period that everybody that were, uh, that were or might have been in contact with this person, everybody's testing negative, we sanitize the school, we cleaned it with that section, then I can only be able to, to reopen again. My husband traveled to Kharteng, which is one of the hot spots two weeks ago. Should we still provide proof of testing that we are clear that we bring us back to school? If you have traveled two weeks ago to Gauteng and to, so it's already, you've been back for two weeks. Um, uh, but if you have clearance that you tested and you did the test the negative, then please also submit it. Um, but um, by now you should, you, in any case, uh, done your 14 days quarantine and you are clear and you've done testing as well, which showed you are clear. So you are definitely clear. Girls are coming back to school, but will not come back to aftercare. How will I build people for aftercare? Uh, again, if you have any after quick, aftercare questions, for example, here, um, a parent said she's bringing back the two girls, but they won't come back to school, but they won't go to aftercare. Uh, please contact the finance department. Uh, give them notice, because that's what your technique will do. You will give them now notice that you're not coming back to aftercare, that they can correct your billing. I'm going to wait a couple of seconds just to see if there are more questions coming in. Seems like we covered all of them all. Okay. Just a reminder that all these uh, webinars are being recorded and it does get uploaded onto our um, website under the COVID-19 tab. So if you also perhaps missed the previous webinar and you want to know what I've referred to numerous times on that webinar, then you're more than welcome to go and watch it. This one will also be uploaded by tomorrow on our webinar as well. So if a parent also says to you they missed out on this uh, webinar, uh, you can just say to them tomorrow it will be uploaded onto our website. Uh, my son is currently in Port Elizabeth since the lockdown began and I have decided to send him to school only in July. Just to be on a safe side, I don't know if I heard correctly about permits that the schools can give out to the kids. Yeah, if you, uh, this question is, my child's in Eastern Cape, it's only going to start in July. Um, there are, a, there's a, a school permit or on the, our letterhead, we'll just say that it's a pupil, it's in the school. Again, please go and fetch them and bring them back, that they rather stay that 14 days at home, that we know that they are clean and cleared before they uh, come back to school.
question is, can we please send you photos uh, of how the um, things will be placed in the classrooms before Monday? We can gladly do that. I can also say already I have my first order tomorrow at 11 o'clock where a certain uh, um, organization is coming to look at our requirements at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Um, and again, I welcome these uh, uh, visits um, because if something is wrong, I want to know about it, that I can fix it. Um, that also just prepare us better. It's all unknown territory for us. It's uncharted waters. But I must really commend my senior management team uh, the academic management team and the staff that worked hard, um, especially the senior management team, to put all these COVID-19 requirements in place. Um, and uh, I think we are not just ticking boxes. I do think we are above par. Also, I want to make it very clear here as well. Any parent that comes on property and uh, feel that there is uh, something that makes them uneasy, please inform me immediately. Uh, I will now again put my cell phone number and email address up after this slide. Um, if there's anything, please make contact with me. I don't want to read it on social media. I don't want to read it in the media. Please send me a message and I will guarantee you I'll contact you and I'll make sure that we correct it. Uh, even when the kids are back next week, uh, if it's good or bad, let me know. I want to know because at the end of the day, we are not doing anything to shortchange anybody. Um, a lot of uh, uh, no sleep has taken place this, this last couple of weeks to ensure that we're ready and have things in place. Um, so I would rather uh, contact me and, and tell me if there's something that bothers you that I can look into it and, and fix it. Seems like the, there's another question. Uniform shop are open between eight and four every day. Uh, also, um, if you're going to come and fetch your, your mask tomorrow for your kids, remember the first mask is free, the others you need to buy. Um, but I would recommend, and it's a good recommendation from a parent there to say, let them practice with that mask this weekend. Um, I must be honest, as an adult still, I, I need, still need to get used to this mask as well, or even the screen. And I think your parents feel the same. So let them wear it, uh, let them get used to it, uh, as well. And uh, so please, um, that, that's very good advice. Please do that. Um, if you want to withdraw your decision on the survey, how do you go about it? <laughs> if you want to withdraw your decision on the survey, I don't know if this is now to spring back early or, or bring back later. Um, the best is to email me. Um, then I can just uh, uh, forward it to Nina Seward. If you have Nina Seward's uh, email address is nseward at St. Patrick's. So remember, all our email addresses are on our website as well and the contact details if you miss it. So even if you want to, to see anybody else's email address, it's all available on our website. Uh, but you can forward it to me and I'll make sure I forward it to Nina. But otherwise, it's nseward, N-S-E-A-W-A-R-D at St. Patrick's. So Z. If you have not fetched your CBC mask by Monday, you may arrive in your own mask on Monday. The masks are washed and sanitized, but uh, remember you need to, in any case, buy more masks. So I would prefer that you come and do it tomorrow if you can, but otherwise they go arrive in your, uh, they may arrive in their own mask, but then they will be asked to, uh, they will be then issued with their, with their mask uh, on Monday morning. But I prefer that you as parents please sort it out uh, tomorrow if you can. Um, I will, uh, even if we, uh, if we really push come to shove, I can assist you on Saturday as well, but we prefer tomorrow, please. Uh, when doing online learning, is it important to do drama, music, and art, or can they spend more time and focus on as English Here's an apparent reading one me to get a draw of my staff. Is music, drama, and art just as important as math and English? Um, remember, your child has elected a subject uh, between doing music, art, or um, a drama. And I know you're asking the question because it's, uh, you're trying to save time, that they rather don't do that and they concentrate more on maths. And I uh, got the question today that you are doing more maths topics. But it's 
to me, it's not a case of which subject is more important. It's about your child's development. And also, um, they just need to break from maths and English as well. They need to, that art, dance and drama, that elective that they've chosen to do as well. You might then elect not to do it on a daily basis. And rather, if you want to do that, keep that for a weekend. That, that if you want to. Um, I'll probably skin the life now by some of my staff afterwards. So that if it's really because of a time constraint, then I'll say keep that for the weekend and then concentrate your maths and English during the week. But don't take the component away from your child because that's important for them and it's also important for their development. If I came to my child's after care now and she's only returning in September, will her space be kept till then? <laughs> The, the question about aftercare, if I cancel now and my aftercare today and I only want to return in September, will you keep my place for, for the person? Remember, we, for one child, we have limited space. But um, again, uh, Carolyn and uh, Ms. Ms. Dob, Ms. Dorp and Tom Seward, they, they keep track of the numbers and they, they keep track of what parents have requested and whatever. So that's why I rather say with an aftercare question, um, I don't want to say your yeah, place will be kept or will not be kept because they've been contact with parents. They have more or less an indication of uh, what they've answered parents up till today. And I want them to, and I want to standardize answer because I don't want to say to you, I kept your space and somebody else said to another parent, no, we won't keep your space. So yeah, I'm going to go in a gray area and don't want to do that. So rather uh, send me that email or send uh, Tom or Karen an email and, uh, and we will give you, the same answer we've given some, uh, any, any other parent. I must be honest, that's the one question I did not prepare for tonight and I'm going to get it wrong. Masks are available from tomorrow uh, and, and shields are also available uh, from tomorrow. And um, then also on Saturday, uh, we will open the clothing shop then as well from nine to one. So the clothing shop is open tomorrow from eight to four or on Saturday from nine to one. Um, so if you would like to, if it's going to be easier for you on Saturday. Uh, but remember, uh, spatial distancing and et cetera will have to be adhered to when you come onto campus, uh, even on, on Saturday, please. Are masks only available for kids who are coming back in June or can parents whose kids are coming back at a later stage, which is kind of the masks. We ideally would like to focus now just on the kids who are starting and also to limit the uh, traffic on campus, uh, feed traffic. We will focus now on the kids who are now starting in the next two weeks, next week and the week thereafter. Um, so I would suggest that uh, just give us until around about the 15th, 16th of June, then all the kids that are now starting in June are then on campus. And then after that, you're more than welcome then to approach. We always make sure we have stock. Um, it's not a case we're running out of stock, but I don't want a, too many feet on campus. So let's just concentrate for the parents that's now starting in the next two weeks. And then uh, from the 15th, 16th, you're more than welcome then to uh, come to, to, during the day to campus to come and, and buy. I'm just going to give another couple of seconds because it seems it comes in, it comes in waves. Okay, it seems like we've... All right, so just to reiterate, on Monday night, I still said ECDs are not allowed to open. That includes PR. Just a reminder now that PR now will start on the 8th of June. It did not go in that letter that we sent out earlier this week because we only heard today we can open PR. And then the ECD age group one to two, three, uh, age group one to two, two to three, and three to four, they will open on the 15th of June. But we will send out the letter tomorrow confirming all of this. We value your feedback and suggest, sorry, it's another question. Eh? Really no uniform. I promise no uniform. One parent asked me this morning, what if I have five different tracksuits? The difficulty is, how do I keep track? that you are wearing different tracksuits. And if I then allow you wearing a school tracksuit, another parent that doesn't know of the arrangement will then say to me, but Jacques, now you're being unfair. Um, so that's why we rather say no uniform. And it goes against my grain to say kids are not allowed to wear uniform, but that is not for everybody's safety. 
We value your feedback and suggestions. Please continue uh, giving your feedback, even on tonight. Please let me know what you think um, on the presentation. Also remember academic matters, please divert that to the teachers, the great dates and to Mr. Homan. And then if you know, have no joy there, it comes to me, but I say again, um, I know it will be resolved immediately. Uh, all operational matters, you can divert to me directly. Uh, and on anything that I've mentioned tonight, you can contact me. Um, that's my details. Just a reminder, that's my email address and that's my cell phone number. Um, so if you would like to phone me, Send me WhatsApp or SMS or email me. You are more than welcome. We are in this together and we'll get through this together. We are one family. And uh, although we as a family will not be fully on campus yet, because some of you are online learning as well, we stay one family. And uh, we will continue with these online meetings on a regular basis, even when the kids are back. We will continue giving you feedback and I'll continue telling you where we are. Uh, but we cannot do this without your support. So I really would like to thank you for your support. Uh, we thank you for your feedback and your continuous constructive criticism as well. With all of that, we know that we can only improve. But I would like to remind you again that we have your child and yours, yours as, a pupil, as a parent and the staff best interest at heart at all times. And I value your feedback and your comments I wish you all a wonderful evening and looking forward to welcome you back on this campus as soon as possible. I wish you all a good night.